The Epistle to the Hebrews, Part 46, A Warning Against Willful Sin Introduction 1. Immediately following a gracious exhortation to draw near to God and hold fast the confession of our hope, we find an ominous warning. A. It is a warning against willful sin. Hebrews 10, 26-39 B. It speaks of reaching a terrible state in which 1. There no longer remains a sacrifice for sin. 2. There is a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation. 2. Is this a warning for Christians? Some would say no. a. They believe in the doctrine once saved, always saved. b. Who hold that true Christians, 1. Cannot so sin to point of being eternally lost. 2. If they begin to sin to the point where they might be lost, God will intervene and take their life to prevent it from happening. 3. Does the Bible teach once saved, always saved? A. It teaches the security of the believer. Those who remain faithful are secure. B. But it also teaches that a believer can become an unbeliever at which point a person has every reason to fear for his or her own salvation. Hebrews 3, 12 through 14. 4. The possibility of apostasy is taught in the Bible, especially in the epistle to the Hebrews. A. We have already seen several warnings implying this possibility. 1. A warning against drifting, Hebrews 2, 1 through 4. 2. A warning against departing, Hebrews 3, 12 through 14. 3. A warning against disobedience, Hebrews 4, 11. 4. A warning against dullness leading to apostasy, Hebrews 5, 11 through 6, 6. B. But perhaps now, with a warning against willful sin, we learn the real danger of losing our salvation if we despise what we have received. Hebrews 10, 26-39 1. What it means to sin willfully. A. Compare other translations. 1. If we deliberately keep on sinning. NIV. 2. For we willfully persist in sin. NRSV 3. For if we go on sinning willfully NASB B. The sense of the Greek is one of repeated action 1. Implying not the act of sin but the state of sin A. All Christians have moments of weakness or ignorant sin 1 John 1 8 through 10 B. It is not inadvertent sin but deliberate sin that is under consideration. 2. A state in which one a. knows the truth Hebrews 10 26 b. b. yet chooses to deliberately and continuously persist in sin. c. Can a true Christian ever reach this point? Yes. 1. Note the pronoun we. The author includes himself in the warning Hebrews 10 26 a. 2. He later describes one who was sanctified by the blood of the covenant, Hebrews 10.29. This warning is directed to those who have been sanctified by the blood of Jesus. When one persists in sin with a high hand, presumptuous, Numbers 15.20-31, they are in grave danger. This is especially true when one is a Christian. What sort of danger? 2. The consequences of willful sin. a. There no longer remains a sacrifice for sin. 1. What sacrifice is under consideration here? Christ's sacrifice. 2. What sacrifice no longer remains? Christ's sacrifice. The blood of Jesus is no longer available for one who persists in willful sin. b. That which does remain a. A certain fearful expectation of judgment, Hebrews 10.27a. A. One can expect a judgment that is certain, Hebrews 9.27 and Acts 17.30 and 31. B. One can expect a judgment that is fearful. 1. For we must answer to Christ himself, 2 Corinthians 5.10 and 11. 
2, and we will be in the hands of the living God, Hebrews 10, 30 and 31. 2. A fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries, Hebrews 10, 27b. A. A judgment involving fire, figurative but torment just the same, Revelation 21, 8. B. A judgment involving indignation, the wrath of God, Romans 2, 5 through 11. C. Such a judgment will devour, not annihilate, but destroy, Matthew 10:28. Such are the consequences of willful sin, and the warning is directed to Christians. Is God just to bring such a punishment upon His children who have been redeemed by the blood of His Son? Here ends Part 46, the Epistle to the Hebrews, a warning against willful sin.